Okay, for this tutorial, we're going to look at pattern-based families um, and how we can deploy them on surfaces. So first thing we're going to do is going to open up the conceptual mass again, make a little quick mass. <laughs> um, and what we're going to do is I'm going to do three of those. Um, I'm going to draw spline through points in just like a tiny little baby arc here. SW, select this one, one a little higher. Escape, SW, select this one, low again. Escape, escape. You see that each one's on there. And remember this unique thing where, oh, I can still come back and manipulate these, right? I'm going to grab all of them. I actually wanted them to be reference lines, so that I continue to manipulate them once they've made something. And now that I still have them selected, I'm going to say create mass. It is important, this is um, to note that when we draw lines like that, I always started from the same side and went the same direction. Um, when we're doing things like dividing lines and stuff like that, if, um, if you draw one left to right and another one right to left, they'll, um, the numbering will reverse and you have to kind of take that into consideration. So right now, um, I'm going to grab the surface. I'm going to show you some neat things we can do. We can divide surface, right? And this is what we had done in my last tutorial. I'm going to put this to like, um, oh, look, we get you. I'm going to put this up to like 28. And 20. OK. OK, so now all of a sudden we just got a whole bunch of these squares, right? But I also want to show you how when we grab this, we can actually change the padding. We can look at, let's say, arrows, hexagons, um, checkers. Now, these aren't actual um, objects. This is just a pattern that we can then nest stuff into. So don't think of this as being the actual model. It's the logic that we want to use. So I'm going to go back to no pattern. My dog's drinking water, sorry for all that noise. Um, and I'm gonna put six and six. Um, yeah, maybe a little more. Let's do eight. Okay. Now, we want to build something to nest in there. And again, we can still come back in, grab this, and it manipulates the surface, right? That's what's kind of nice here. So now we're gonna say file new. Family, I'm going to hit G, but instead of doing generic model adaptive, I'm going to come down to generic model pattern base. All right, so what we have here is we have some parameters already set up. So this is the pattern that's sitting here. What it has is a reference line going between four points, and these points are stuck at the nexus of this, these grids, right? So they can't go left and right. They can only go up and down in that point. Okay, and that's what makes this the pattern base. What's nice is if I grab the pattern itself, I can actually change it to these different octagons, you know, uh, triangles. And so this is where we start to use those patterns. But right now, I'm going to go back to just rectangle, the one it starts with, and I'm going to show you some stuff. So first, if we grab these reference lines, we can just create an object. Remember, the one on the right is just a surface. The one on the left starts off as a mass. This came in at four foot high. I can change that here, or I can see in the properties, I have positive offset four feet. I'm gonna leave that positive offset at four feet, but I'm gonna show you how we can also do negative offset two feet. Now all of a sudden we have a six foot thick mass, four feet up, two feet down. This gets really nice when we're starting to deal with construction and we have like a controlled surface and other stuff going on. I can also come in here and say, well, I can make this negative three feet and I've got a one foot thick panel that's floating above this. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this back down to zero. Okay, we're going to save this and PM pan, uh, basic panel. Basic panel. My dog's grumpy. Okay. So now we just have this solid object, right? And I'm gonna I want you to see what happens when we load this in. When I say load into project, unlike the generic model adaptive where we instantly got to place it, this one just comes in. And um, I want to show you that all we have to do is grab this object. And 
all of a sudden we can look and say that pattern base, we still have all these other things, but when we get down into rectangle, we see PM basic thick panel, and I can apply that panel. Now it happened that these all went down. I can tell the way the surface was that they all extruded down. Sometimes they go in the wrong direction, or the direction you don't want them to go. There's a right and wrong, there's just the front and back. So we can flip component, I want to flip. Okay, click that, and now all of a sudden they're all going up. What I want you to notice is that we could still actually come in, grab one of these points, move it around, and everything adapts, right? So this, all of this is the component nesting on the divided surface, nesting on the surface, nesting on the lines, nesting on blah, 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 blah the points. But you notice that there's all these gaps. So I want to show you a couple different things. What we're going to do is go back to this. Remember, I can either control tab and jump over, or I can tab into a component and double click on it and it opens it again. So either way, there's ways of just getting it in there. I want to grab this and I want to say negative three feet enter. So we've got this one foot thick panel up here, right? And so I want to save file. Oh, actually we're going to float it up a little higher. So I'm going to grab this again and I'm going to say this at five feet and this at minus four foot eight inches okay so now we have a four four inch thick panel that's floating way up there right i'm gonna say file save as family click in here and i'm gonna name this as loading panel okay i'm gonna load that one in okay now this is interesting, so I can grab this whole thing, I'm gonna come back in here, and now look, under rectangle, I've got the thick panel and I've got the floating panel. Now what's interesting is I can also come in here and just tab, grab that one, tab, control, grab that one, maybe I grab, tab, control that one, Okay, I got those four. I can actually just go back and change those four to the other panel. I can be selective in how I do that. So I can change all of them or I can change a select one of them. But we're still getting these gaps. Okay, so the idea that I want you to see here is that these panels, um, we can actually just grab a few of them. And actually we can flip those ones, you know, we can have fun changing which way we're actually going to go. Okay, um, what I also want to do is say there's a different way that we can manipulate this. Control tab. If we don't want those gaps everywhere, what I want you to realize is that this was a reference line that was drawn on the surface as the surface is. The surface was, um, the surface in this case is curved, which means, of course, the, the implied surface that's outside of this is a much greater distance, which is why we have the gap, right? Um, and so what I want you to see is that if we do this a little differently, I'm actually going to, um, okay, what we're going to do is rebuild this in a way that removes those gaps. So if I tab in, I'm going to grab this and delete, and we're going to rebuild this with a different logic. So we're still having this framework. We're still going to use this pattern. But what I want to do is I want to have the points above not be extruded straight from this surface, but actually that there's a point directly above this one, and a point directly above this one, and a point directly above this one. That way they actually respond to the curve of the surface at the time. Okay, and this will make sense as I do it. So we're going to make a point, SW, I select that, drop it. SW, select that one, put it on there. SW, that one, put it on there. SW, this one, put it on there. Now, all of a sudden, we have a series of points that are sitting on top of this. And so I can just come in and I can grab it and move it off. This is what's interesting. When I grab this one, it says it's two feet. Oh, I can actually chart, let's say maybe exactly two feet. Okay. Now, this is what's nice is that it's hosted on that surface. So no matter where this one goes, it goes, right? Okay. So if that's the case, I want this to actually be a parameter. So I'm going to say this as... Panel height. Okay. 
And now I can actually grab this one. I'm going to control, grab that one, control, and grab that one. And then I want all of them to be the panel height. Now I've got all four points. Each one's on their own one. And there. And it doesn't matter where I leave them because it's still going to bring them in at the surface. Like me moving this, I could leave this up here or down there. It doesn't matter because it's always going to set these at the intersection points to begin with. So now I'm going to do reference line. Make sure 3D snaps on, chains on. It's nice. I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five. Escape, escape. And grab this. I'm going to create solid form. And I'm going to actually going to just say negative offset uh, two inches, positive offset zero. Okay, now all of a sudden we have this small plane that's up there, but this is going to be, this is very different. Instead of just taking the one that's the line that's on the surface and extruding up, we started with these points are all responding to those exact UV locations, which means, let's say file, save as a family, I'm going to say, uh, floating um, responsive. Load this in. Okay, now I'm just going to grab this as a whole thing and change all of them. And then I have yet another one down here, responsive. Right? Oop, put the in there. And now we have it closing the seam. So what I want you to understand is this is still floating above what was the original surface, but because each location is responding to it, we start to get all those gaps closed. I could still come in here and tab, grab this one and say, I want you to be the other floating panel. And we would get it there. I could grab this one and tell you I want to be the thick panel. Okay. So this is where we can have a little control over that after the fact too. Now, one more thing. What is this we can also do? We can tab. I'm going to make another version of this, but let's grab this surface, this object we made. And I'm going to, I want this to float. I'm going to go up, let's say, two feet and minus one foot ten. Okay, so now we extended this up, and now this is floating even above that, right? This is controlled by this, this is controlled by this. I'm going to do something unique here. I'm going to now go and I'm going to bring in, um, if we had the pipe file open, I could just say bring in the pipe file, you know, load in the family. But I can do that the other way. Instead of loading from the file that's open into the other one, I can actually say, hey, I want to bring in something. I want to load the family. I want to bring in my documents. Um, where's my, it's my computer? All my stuff's so on my Google Drive. Uh, let's use this class components. I want my generic pipe. Okay. Now we can come into generic pipe. Remember, I made it a structure, and I want to come in here, and I'm going to actually um, duplicate this and name it something else. So, in essence, I'm making another version, um, and I'm going to say PM um, space frame pipe. And I want this end offset to be like two inches. Pipe diameter over uh, three inches. Okay. Now I have both of them over here. If we see, there's both generic pipe and the new one I made. So the new one I made, I'm bringing in, and I'm going to start by going from here to here, 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 here. Here, shift, right click, here, there, and there. Escape, escape. You'll notice, so what I've done is I've done two bars on one side, two bars on the other side in one vertical. The idea is this is going to repeat everywhere because when this cell repeats to the left, right, up and down, the blank ones aren't being repeated. That one comes here, here, and here as it's goes further. So um, I'm realizing I don't want this to float so high. So instead of going two feet up, I'm going to go um, make this just 10 inches up and this one foot up. 
Makes sense now, it's just one foot above there. Okay, now let's file, save as family, space frame. Now let's load that into project. Okay, I can grab this whole thing. Again, got to get another one down into space frame. And Sometimes this depends on your computer, this won't take too long. It's the first five to ten percent takes forever, and then it goes boom, and it's done. But um, the idea is yes, that little part might take a bit to do, but the ability to come back in, have this space frame, have these panels, and be able to manipulate this after is I could still come back in and let's see, where's my line? Oh, there's my center node right there. I can grab that one, raise it up. And it'll think crunch. And change. So there's a lot of ways we can manipulate these things and not just making strange curvy forms. This can be very helpful on even flat surfaces, curtain panels, elements like that. That's it for now.